Joining me now, the gentleman I was referring to from Louisiana, House Minority Whip Steve Scalise. Congressman, what do you make of President Trump's visit to Kenosha and the word salad from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Well, first, good morning, Deg, and good to be back with you and, and your panel. Uh, look, I think it was really good that the president went to Kenosha to stand with the people who want law and order, who, who really are fed up with their Democrat leaders not protecting them, not providing the kind of safety in their communities. And interestingly, you got Joe Biden and Kamala talking about uh, divisiveness. Maybe they forgot to watch their whole convention. Uh, the Democrat convention was filled with nothing but divisiveness and hatred towards Donald Trump. That's not America. I, I was so proud of the Republican convention, which was focused on an uplifting message with President Trump's to done, done to fight for families, to fight for the forgotten men and women of this country, and to rebuild our middle class and, and include everybody in that growth and to get us through COVID so that we can rebuild that great economy back again. And uh, this is a great example of the president showing leadership going out. Uh, I was with him Saturday in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where he was standing with the people of Lake Charles who, who were just devastated in the path of Hurricane Laura. And he committed mm -hmm. to help us rebuild. He's committing to help the people of Wisconsin rebuild. That's what this president's about. He's a builder. He stands with people to, to protect their communities, uh, to stand with law enforcement as we do that, uh, and then to help rebuild these communities well, that these Democrat leaders are, are allowing to be devastated. Well, there was no mention of the, the city violence, the urban violence at the Democratic National Convention. And then after the RNC was let out, you had Senator Rand Paul confronted and threatened outside, outside the White House. Brian Mast, so many Congressman others. Brian yeah. Mast, who has, is, a, is a double amputee and a combat veteran and a Purple Heart recipient. You had elderly people targeted, and you yourself were nearly killed by a Bernie Sanders supporter. So how does the rhetoric about you have a president dividing the nation and it was all kumbaya until he was uh, elected, how does that really resonate? Yeah, it's not resonating, and I think that's why you're seeing Joe Biden come out of the basement to try to act as if he, he now wants to say something positive uh, about where where our law enforcement officers are when he was sitting on the sidelines and, and allowing this kind of hatred towards law enforcement go forward. Uh, you know, look, I mean, I think people get what's going on. They know that Donald Trump stands up for law and order, and he's been vocal against the violence from the beginning. In fact, he reached out to those Democrat governors and offered them assistance, said, we'll, we'll be happy to send in federal help. But the problem is the, these governors and these mayors said they don't want the federal help. And these are all supporters of Joe Biden. It's it's not happening in in these in Republican-run states. Frankly, it's not happening in a lot of Democrat-run states. It's only a select few states that are allowing this this mob rule. And, uh, and President Trump stands up against it. Joe Biden was silent until he saw the poll numbers slipping away from him. And, and then he's been trying to play some kind of tacit game on both sides. You can't play both sides of this issue. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin saying that he's ready to reach a deal with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on a new COVID-19 stimulus bill. Congressman, how soon do you, can we get any kind of bar, bipartisan agreement? I think the number thrown out by Mark Meadows yesterday was maybe in the half a trillion dollar range rather than three or two trillion. Hey, you know, Doug, and this is an area where there's been a lot of bipartisan support to help small businesses and families through this tough time. Uh, it seems like every time that, that there seems to be an idea, everybody coalesces around. Nancy Pelosi just throws things on the table, like bailing out the failed states that had multi-billion dollar deficits prior to COVID, and it's non-starters, things that, that she knows aren't going to happen. They were trying to force mail-in ballots and taking away a state's ability to require picture ID, which is something that protects the integrity of the vote. That's not going to happen. Look, there's over $500 billion of unspent money out there, including $130 billion in the Paycheck Protection Program. Let's make that more flexible to help families, to help small businesses. Steve Forbes. Uh, Congressman, uh, mail-in balloting, uh, we, that's already beginning to get underway. Uh, what can be done, especially in swing states, to, to uh, ensure integrity here? Do we have unrealistic deadlines, or is it just something we're just going to have to throw our hands up in the air and hope uh, nothing bad happens? Can justice do anything? Can the party have poll watchers the equivalent of for uh, the, these ballots? What can be done to ensure integrity here? Yeah, you know, I know a lot of us are concerned about the integrity of the vote when you look at 
uh, what the speaker was trying to do of, of literally forcing states to mail ballots to people on the rolls, including people who are on the rolls illegally. Every state will tell you. Uh, they've got tens of thousands minimum people on their rolls illegally, whether it's people moving around or people who don't follow the rules registering. Uh, you don't want those ballots to literally millions of ballots just to be floating around out there. I mean, that would be ripe for voter fraud. There's story after story of voter fraud that occurs, and yet Democrats want to act like it never happens. They know it happens. Uh, and, and the more you you open up these laws and undermine states who have good integrity laws, look, every person ought to be able to vote once. And if somebody is able to steal a vote, they're taking away your vote. They're nullifying your vote. And that's going to be a critical there, issue, there Steve. Anything, I, I think uh, it's something we, we, need to... we, we can do. Anything that can be done that isn't being done to ensure that integrity, whether it's uh, justice, you know, they're supposed to protect mm -hmm. voting rights and the like. Yeah, and, and Justice Department has has the ability to make sure that voting voting rights are protected as they should. Each state runs their own laws, and at the state level, you've got people on both sides that work to make sure that those laws are followed properly. But you also have some states uh, that have changed their laws to make it easier. Things like same day registration with no picture ID. Those are the kind of laws that actually make it ripe for voter fraud, and we've seen, unfortunately, examples of how it's blatantly abused, and and that's something that we're concerned about. I called the New York County Board of Elections before the last presidential election to try and check on my registration because they had magically lost the fact that I live here in New York. And the man answered the phone, said, we're busy, call back another time, and hung up on me. Big, lar largest city in the country, and the people running the board of uh, the, the county board of elections, well, they don't even have voicemail. Congressman, great to see you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah, that's the same same city that's going to send a counselor when somebody's trying to break into your house. So anyway, good luck to you. Y'all take care. Well said, <laughs> Congressman Steve Scalise.